Greenland's glaciers look different from above. They're folds of ice now weakened by warmth. And in August, rain fell on the summit of the ice cap for the first time on record. This is our climate crisis, and we wanted to see it up close. Five, six, seven. We have seven girls and we have a crew. Wonderful. Looking back, launching an expedition to Greenland in a pandemic was logistically a big ask. But it's never easy to explore the unexplored. These are the channels that um, very recently were, you couldn't navigate them because they were so chocker of ice. OK, power's free. Keel is down. If I was going to cross this Denmark Straits and anything, I think this would be up there in the choices. <laughs> Joan knew the challenges we'd yeah, face over the next few weeks at sea much better than any of us. She's a professional sailor, although she's never navigated through ice. You're looking at the waves and you're realising that this boat is it. Ice is Felicity's department. She's a scientist and polar explorer who in 2012 became the first woman to ski alone across Antarctica. The rest of us come from all walks of life, but what brought us together was our common interest in climate science and sustainability. <laughs> so for a solid week, we sailed and sometimes motored across the strait. Days became nights and we began to lose track of time. We've just got the radar up pretty much full time, looking ahead of us on the boat to see if we can see any icebergs. Right, We've so. just seen an iceberg. Yeah? First iceberg. As we slowly made our way closer to the coast of Greenland and our first stop, Prince Christensen, the chunks of ice grew in number and in size. About 80 miles to the entrance of Prince Christensen. And so we should be in the entrance this evening or early tomorrow morning. It was a long, rough night inching into the waterway. We've been navigating through thick fog at between one and two knots so that we can avoid so much ice. Emma's ex-RAF and served in Afghanistan. She's training to row solo across the Atlantic, but she's never done anything quite like this. But I've been hanging off the front of the uh, yacht with a torch, with a headlight, basically, trying to direct the captain as to where these, these icebergs are. And I actually looked out my little window to see if we'd hit something, and we hadn't. But we'll have a good view of it tomorrow morning. Oh, it is tomorrow morning. <laughs> it is tomorrow morning. Mental. It's hard to believe how rough it was now in here when it's so still. But yeah, I think everybody is absolutely knackered now. <laughs> sure is. You guys well do done. this uh, crossing to the beautiful passage and all the courage <laughs> that you all have had. It's really nice to be getting out and doing a bit of exploring now. It was really good to be getting off the boat. We're going to go and do some trawls and see what we find. In the smaller inflatable zodiac, we headed for the nearest glacier, looking out for microplastics along the way. It was good not to see any visible plastic pollution, just more bits of broken up ice. Oh, can you hear the popping now? Each of these tiny little bubbles might well hold air from many thousands of years ago. Ancient air. So it's really odd to think that, you know, you could suck this piece of ice and actually be sampling the atmosphere from eons ago. All in the shadow of a glacier. We have to be really vigilant when we're around glaciers like this because if uh, bits of ice carve off the front, you, they send a huge wave outwards. We're keeping an eye out. We don't want to hang around here too long. As a teenager, Felicity came to the fjords of Greenland on a youth expedition. You can see now that whereas we were just a short trek from the ice then, you know, this would now be quite a long distance. She's shocked at how quickly the ice has receded. You know, man's footprint is a lot heavier here now than it was 25 years ago. Um, yeah, so it makes me feel a bit nostalgic and uh, 
But the, the, the big shock is that I'm not surprised. You know, this, this is what we know is happening all around the world. That night, we got some bad news. Greenland had a COVID surge and we had to change our plan. It took a few days to find somewhere we could safely come ashore without posing a risk. <laughs> After almost two weeks, we'd come to our last day at sea. We're doing 29 knots, <laughs> going quite fast. If we were quick, there was still time to visit one more glacier. Like the whole expedition had been, the experience was exhilarating and at the same time, deeply troubling. You can only imagine how much ice is being lost every single day. And, you know, it also just rained here and that rain will also be getting down to the cracks of the ice. The, the rain's warmer than the ice and it stopped raining for five minutes and it's carved. You can see that this change has been huge and really rapid in one lifetime. You don't really get a more visual picture of climate change than that.